Okay, what a difference a week can make here in the weather in Nova Scotia. One week ago, I would not have been able to come into the woods that I'm in right now because we were still under a blanket of three feet, one meter of snow. And it just made it way too hard to get in here. But in the last week, we've had two storms back to back, heavy rains, high winds, and quite moderately warm temperatures as well. Can you see? All but a few patches of snow are gone. Simply amazing. Do you know, we had more snow in the month of February than we normally, or at least more recently, have been getting all winter long. Very unusual for us. I mean, back in the day when I was young, that would have been a common winter, but it would have started earlier in December and gone right through to the end of March. Now we really don't get anything until the middle of January. This time, not even till early February. Then we got hammered. That's, that's when the snow came for us. But now it's kind of back to where it normally is recently, in recent years, for our winters. Early March, temperatures right now uh, warmer than I'm dressed for, so i got to shed a few layers. Probably three degrees plus on the Celsius scale, so just above freezing. Bit breezy, but a beautiful day. And that's the reason I came out. I wanted to see if I could get into the woods here and get to a couple of places I like to go to do some video recording. And yes, I can. I even brought my spikes, my Catula micro spikes. I just laid them on the ground there a minute ago, thinking I was going to need them. I haven't. There is not enough snow or ice in here to be concerned with. So that's the reason I'm in the woods today. I'm here to scout out so I can start coming back, start getting caught up on a lot of videos that I have uh, neglected in recent weeks because of not being able to get into the woods. But I have another reason for coming out. And it's all about coffee. I mean, this is a hike and a coffee chat, right? Well, this is a hike and a coffee chat, but the chat or the coffee will be dedicated to a well-known YouTube bushcrafter. Someone we most, well, I'm, I'm assuming all of us know, but if you don't, you will by the time I finish this video. Um, I'm going to leave it at that until I get to my location and set up for coffee, and then I'll give you a few more hints, and then, of course, we'll talk about this person and their channel. All right, let's get started. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this. There sh this should be up to my knees or higher in snow, and it's not, so I appreciate that. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I appreciated the snow while it was here. I got some snowshoeing done, had some fun, did a lot of exercise, shoveling snow that I hadn't done for a while. But it is nicer to have or be able to get into the woods like this. Now, I don't know if you can see through the trees. You're going to get a better look in a minute. But that's the lake the, down by where I usually go. That's still frozen, although I wouldn't imagine it's too safe to go on. Temperatures have been going up and down. In fact, this is what we would call the best maple sugaring time of year. Below freezing at night and above freezing during the day. And as long as we get that combination, maple sugar should start running. Now, there are some sugar maples in here. No, that's an oak. I have tapped birch trees. I've never tapped maple trees. I might do that this year if I can find some. I have a couple of spiels for tapping with. If I do, I'll make a video of that. All right, a uh, bit of a rocky area coming up. I'll have to turn the camera off. I'll bring you back in a few minutes. So I have shown this in the past, but it was been from a, a different vantage point, another overlook on the lakes. The area that I'm looking at right now, or you're looking at, I'm facing away from, is known as Susie Lake Quarry Lake in the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes Wilderness here just in the outskirts of the city proper, city of Halifax. Let me see if I can aim it. I'm looking at the viewfinder. All right, so over there is what's known as Susie Lake. If I move the camera back in that corner, it's named Quarry Lake. I said name because they look like two distinct bodies of water on a map, but there is a channel, narrow channel of water connecting the two of them. One lake, two lakes. Two lakes by name, anyway. And the wind is strong on my back. Hopefully it's not picking up on the microphone right now. Okay, I'm just outside of where I want it to be to set up for lunch, so let's finish that off, get set up, and enjoy some coffee. Oh, yeah, I guess that figures, right? So here I am bragging about how little snow there is in the woods. And the one place I want to set up is full of snow. Okay, not too bad. I can either string my hammock chair between these two trees 
or I have a rock there I can put my sip pad on to keep from getting soaked. So I think I will string my hammock chair up. The snow's not very deep. I'd be able to tromp it down. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's, uh, let's get started. I see a stick here. That's good. Set up my rope around the tree here so I can hang my hammock from the tree. That should work out. Marlin spike hitch on a rope. I've shown that in other videos. Easiest way to hang the backpack. All I need is to find my grab strap. Here it is. Right? There we go. I think I'm going to take a layer off because I am starting to get very warm. I can hang this on. Oh. Yeah, base layer, fleece, mid-level fleece, not my heavy ones. My wool coat, too much, too much. I've already taken off my neck gaiter. But as I often say, better too much than too little. Okay, now we can get started. And another layer. I almost forgot. <laughs> uh, a puffy vest. Just in case it was colder than I thought it was. All right. Tree straps. Yep. It'll work out well here. They want to go to the ground. Might as well let them. So I've shown this in other videos as well, but uh, just to quickly explain what I'm doing here, I have a piece of a cargo strap that I converted into a tree strap. It has loops on both ends, but it's the loop on the far end that I have fed through and around the tree, which happens to be... Oh no, it is a sugar maple. Oh, it's not convenient. Just talking about them. And uh, right on the end of it, tied permanently, is just a small piece of wood doweling. It just keeps me from having to go looking for sticks on the ground. I think this should be good. We'll see in a minute. And hopefully that'll be high enough to make this work. Should be. All right, so you have to start somewhere, so I must well start with this one. You have to do the same thing I did for hanging my backpack, which is to uh, create a loop, fold the loop up. I know you can't see it, but uh, I'll put a link to the video where I demonstrated this. Put the peg through, so it's called a Maryland spike hitch. And you can see now, hopefully you can see the stick sticking through. And then I can hang my one end of my hammock chair on that, but there's a good chance I'll have to adjust it anyway. Because I haven't had it set up for doing this with in a while, so I won't know. And then the loop goes over top of the knot. All right. Oh, that's not too bad. All right. If I set it up a little on the tight side to start with, so almost straight across, then what'll happen is 
when I sit in it, everything stretches a little bit. And that's a little bit too short to start. All right, let's go back here. Maybe I'll bring the camera in just so you can see these knots in action. Well, that's a little, well, we'll see. Let's try it out. What, what something gave? One of my knots gave. Oh, it's the rope. I was, uh, had an email chat with my friend Steve Ripley who has the Drifting Spore YouTube channel and he has a hammock chair and we were talking about this exact process and for me the hardest part of this process, it's not hard, I shouldn't say hard, that's not the right way of saying it, the trickiest part is actually getting the rope to not let go when you go to sit in it. So I'm actually putting, looks like a trucker's hitch with a double slip knot release. Now let's see. Oh yeah, that's much better. Yep. All right, this is my setup. I got a few more things to do and then we'll come back when I get my, ready to start my coffee. I did say I'd give you a look at the arrangement I have here. So there's the cargo strap, loop, strap passed through the loop, down to this knot, which is a Merlin spike hitch and a piece of doweling that I keep attached just for that reason. My paracord is looped over the knot, down to the chair or hammock chair, over to the other side, back up to this tree. Simple. Just takes a little bit of practice knowing exactly where the right setup is. All right, here's your next hint in who this person could be that we're going to be talking about. And uh, it's all about coffee. So this person enjoys a good cup of coffee while they're out in the woods. Many of us do, myself included. He and I have talked a number of times about coffee making and uh, uh, we share a lot of the same tastes. He settled in on the mocha pot as his favorite way of making coffee. Now, he did try the AeroPress. I believe he enjoys using that. I, like, I prefer the AeroPress, but I do like the mocha pot. So I thought in honor of this person today, I'd bring out one of my mocha pots and make coffee using this. Now, if you're interested, uh, the mocha pot process for making coffee out here in the woods, I have a full video on that. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, uh, maybe just a minute or two as we get ready. And uh, then we'll get this going. So to start with, the mocha pot has basically two chambers, the lower chamber and the upper chamber. The lower chamber holds the water. The upper, upper chamber is where the brewed coffee will go once it is complete. I have a paper filter in here today that I'm going to be talking about. The coffee resides in this funnel type of thing. You drop that down inside, you put the chamber on top, and you apply heat to the bottom, and as the coffee heats, it will turn to steam. The steam will go up through the bottom of that funnel, through the metal filter, up through the bottom of the upper chamber, which also has a metal filter, and then flow out of a small spout right here and fill the chamber up. They used to be called, well, they often still are called stovetop espresso makers. They're not espresso maker because they are not using pressure to create the coffee. They're just using steam and steam and hot water flowing through the coffee. Mocha pot is the correct name for them. All right, let's get this going. I do want to use that filter. I'm going to show you what that's all about in a minute. In order to get this set up, you first need to put in the water. Now, the nice thing about a mocha pot is, is that it is kind of laid out for you. Just how much coffee, how much water. There is a pressure relief valve on the side right here. And when you pour water in, you just come up to just below. Now you can stay further below. Depends on how much water you want or how much coffee you want. And I am just below that line. Drop the filter in. Put my coffee in. Rampage coffee again. I don't know if he can buy his Rampage. Should ask him someday. He's actually closer to where the Rampage coffee is roasted than I am. That might be another hint. Pour this into the coffee holder, the filter. And I can't quite get three 
scoops of coffee in there and you don't need to fill it and pack it down. It's not necessary either. Let's put that aside. I put the cover on the water. So here's where the paper filter comes in. This is a paper filter from an AeroPress and it just happens to be just the right side to go up inside there and on top. Now, why would I bother doing that? It wasn't designed to work that way. Um, it just gives it a little bit smoother flavor, less oils, less of the grinds and the fill and the you know fines that can come through. All right, so it's all ready to go. Now I just got to get my fire going. It'll take a minute for this to come up to temperature. So um, when this comes back and is flaming, and yes, you're right, people have asked, this is the Lofi wood gas stove. That'll come in a later video, not this one. Just the perfect size for doing this. So I will get my fire going. And we'll come back when it's time to put this on, because believe me, it only it'll take a minute or so for this to perk. The Lofi is going. Let's put this on. All right, nice and balanced. Coffee mug. All right, it'll take just a moment or two before this starts actually perking. I think what I'll do is reposition the camera so you can actually see the coffee perking into the top of the mocha pot. All right, I, I expect most of you have guessed by now who it is that we're talking about. For those of you who haven't, and maybe for those of you who don't even know who this person is, we're talking about Lonnie at Far North Bushcraft and Survival. Longtime favorite YouTube channel for me, and I know many, many people. And it was because of a few of my viewers, you people, asking, whatever happened to Lonnie? that I reached out and had a conversation with Lonnie and asked if it was okay to share his story with you. And he said, by all means, let them know what Connie and I are doing here in South, South Central Alaska. So I, I have a, something I do want to read because it's the description of Lonnie's channel from his YouTube page. So just let me push this up. So as I mentioned, Lonnie and Connie do live in South Central Alaska. I noted that he is, has published over 329 videos going back 13 years and currently has 374,000 subscribers. What a testament to the quality and quantity and uh, the topics that Lonnie covered and more importantly to the person himself. Do you know, let me read his uh, channel description. Here at Far North Bushcraft and Survival, you will learn about many long forgotten tricks and tips of the old time woodsman. Not only will you learn about bushcraft or woodscraft, you will learn many things that will help you survive in less than ideal survival situations as well. Come along and sit with me by the campfire as I delve into these subjects in a way that you can easily learn then do yourself. I will show you how to make shelters, gather food, use wild medicines, and as well as start fires without matches, lighters, or ferro rods. Uh, the, <laughs> that pretty much summed it up. He nailed it. You know, I, Lonnie, Lonnie's channel was one of the very first ones that I discovered uh, early on in my quest to become a bushcrafter. I mean, okay, I've been a lifetime in the woods, but when I discovered the phenomenon of bushcraft, as it is now called, wasn't called that back when I was a young man, of course, I searched that title out and Lonnie came right at the top of the list. So I started watching Lonnie's channels, uh, channel and all of his videos. Lonnie was one of my first subscribers, believe it or not, and has been a longtime supporter of my channel. Now, Lonnie and I have never met in person, but I feel like we have because we share so many common values and uh, we, we've chatted a lot by email and of course through comments on each other's videos that I feel like I know Lonnie and Connie and it would be a dream for me to visit Lonnie and Connie in South Central Alaska someday because let's be honest, to me, for a guy from the small province of Nova Scotia on the east coast of Canada, Alaska was the, the true wilderness. That was where people who practice bushcraft on a daily basis, things that I was just using on the weekends, basically, or out in the woods during my retirement. These people lived these skills, and it was kind of living the dream, what a lot of us thought was the ideal way to live, way back in the woods, little or no power, or off-grid in a, in a, 
you know, a, a whole true to a dream kind of a scenario. That's really what I want to say about it. But it isn't just the setting that makes Lonnie's channel so good. It is Lonnie and Connie themselves, down to earth people with a very fundamental way of expressing what they want to to you. Both very dedicated, uh, truly faithful people to God and express that freely in their videos, a true testament to the Christian ethic and the Christian faith. You know, it, it, it's been a while now since Lonnie produced any new videos. I mean, the, his catalog of 329 videos is still there if anybody wants to go look at them. And I highly recommend you do. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But when I reached out to Lonnie, I wanted to find out first, are you guys okay? I mean, we haven't heard from you. Lonnie says, we're doing fine. We're enjoying life. Everything is continuing the way it had been. There's no health issues. There's nothing wrong. It's just like many of us YouTubers have discovered. It's getting harder and harder to produce videos these days. And when you produce videos, it's harder and harder for them to gain the attention of viewers like yourself. There's so much competition. There's so much good stuff out there, but it is just harder and harder to do so. So Lonnie decided that he was going to give up the practice of making YouTube videos. And, but that doesn't mean he's given up his lifestyle. In fact, when Lonnie did get back to me after I emailed them, they had just re, uh, returned from their off-grid camp that many of you uh, would have watched in some of his videos and to their main home. And uh, they were just getting back to normality, if you will, of having lived out in the woods for a couple of weeks off-grid and then back to, to living with power and lights and that type of thing that we all, every, the rest of us, enjoy every day. Uh, I, you know, Lonnie's fundamental way of expressing himself is what really endeared him to us. I mean, we felt like we knew Lonnie. He, there was no pretense, there was no airs. The man did not try to tell you he was an expert. He shared his knowledge, the skills that he has, as, as if they were an everyday thing for him, and they are, of course. And he did it in a way that made it for easy for us to understand and want to try and practice on our own. I know it was for me, and I'm sure many of you. Okay, I could go on and on about Lonnie and Connie. I really enjoyed when both of them were in the videos together because that dynamic was, was extra special for sure. And I used to love when Lonnie would come on and say, I'm Lonnie and behind the camera is my wife, Connie. Really special. Okay, Lonnie is still out there. He's still enjoying life. He's still living the dream. He wants you to know that he's happy and still living a faith-filled life in Christ. So what more can we say? Um, um, congratulations to Lonnie for a lifetime of helping us newbies in the bushcraft world get started and, and uh, learn new skills and enjoy what we were doing. Uh, this coffee is dedicated to you, my friend. You know, the Mocha Pot does make a good cup of coffee. There's no question about it. Still not as good as the AeroPress, though. I know many of you would like to reach out and say hello to Lonnie, then go to his channel. His channel is still there. His videos are still there. It's been a while since he produced a new one. That doesn't mean you can't comment on the old ones. Lonnie still sees all of those comments. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I'd encourage you to do so. And if you're new to bushcraft or if you weren't aware of Lonnie, go back and look through his catalog of stuff. Amazing. Just simply amazing. Okay. That's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this, and I, I want to thank Lonnie for giving me permission to share his story with all of you. If you'd like to add anything to this, do so in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.